So hey, how is it going everyone? It's Peter here again. And this time I would like to show a really cool tip in Blender. If you are working with Grease Pencil and you are interested in pixel art, I think you will like this. For those who've been watching my channel, you may know that I am working quite frequently with Grease Pencil. I consider it as a very powerful tool and recently I dig into pixel art. I really like that style or that pixelated graphic and I was wondering how would I achieve this look with Grease Pencil and I realized there are at least two ways how would I do it. I guess there are some plugins who would do this job even better but anyways I would like to show you these two ways one is better than the other and I will explain you why. So without further ado uh, we have Blender here and I I created this simple explosions. This is basically just hand drawn. I have simple materials like stroke with fill and some shading and highlights. Very simple, right? And it doesn't look that good, to be fair. <laughs> I think I think it doesn't look that good now. So from this simple graphic, I would like to make this in pixel art style, obviously. So so the first way you can achieve this is uh, just follow me and you will see. I do recommend to have your filter size at zero and also, yeah, also disable viewport denoising. I don't think it, it does a big difference, but I usually have it disabled when I'm working with, when I deliberately working with uh, aliased or pixelated look because it tends to smooth things out and we don't want that. Okay, so, uh, but here's the first thing. Maybe you already heard about this. You have these effects. When it comes to Grease Pencil, you have this effect, it supports, it is right below modifiers option and we can just, we can just choose pixelate. This is uh, one of the effects which Grease Pencil offers us. So we can make this, we can make this pixelated. Let's have a look. We, I can scale this up, let's say 50 pixels, right? And this is, I, I will turn off anti-aliasing so it's a little bit better, you can see this is if I don't turn off the anti-aliasing, it looks, yeah, it, it is smoothing and it looks like there is some sort of bicubic filtering. If you have, you may know this in Photoshop, but also in Blender, if you look at this, I have some material. I'm not, I'm not using materials here, right? But uh, uh, let me just, yeah. For example, if I, if I wanted to use some texture, here is a linear filtering, and this is also a type of filtering which is smoothing things out. If uh, if you choose other options, for example, closest, it will be without. It will be like a nearest neighbor filtering. It will not have that anti-aliasing and semi-transparent pixels all around. So I do not like this, and I think many of you wouldn't like this either. Despite turning off anti-aliasing, you can see it is better. It is, of course, it is better. Uh, and I will even draw something, just look at this, right, this stroke. It doesn't look that good, because it is still, you can see, you, we still have these semi-transparent pixels all around, and it doesn't matter if I, if I scale the size up or down, I have, uh, in advance, even hardness is at 1, and this is still, this is not, I think, how it should look. Uh, because uh, in many pixel art, the graphic is simply color of pixel and different color. Nothing nothing like smoothing or things like these. I don't want this kind of smoothing here. Uh, so what's the second option, how we would achieve this? Uh, we can try this in compositing. Uh, let me see. So I will turn this off for now. We don't... Okay, we don't, we don't need it. Okay, so this pixelate effect, I will just disable it. Okay, so we are back. And uh, I go to compositing, we choose use notes. Maybe some of you he heard about this, <laughs> this is not something brand new. But here's the thing, if you use Blender, I believe it's uh, since 3.4 or something like that. If you use newer Blender, you can see Compositor in viewport. I will soon explain you what I mean. Okay, so I will render this just for demonstration. We know that we have no... This is not pixelated style yet, of course, but yeah. So we can see. We can, we can uh, render this. The compositor in Blender works the way that you render, let's say, one frame and you have it in temporary memory and then you can, then you can edit it and see differences, right? So we have, we have this image here. 
and I can simply pixelate this to with my compositor and I will quickly show you why am I doing this this way <laughs> okay so this is the way we can we can we can make this pixelated without that awkward smoothing. The process is very simple, in fact we just scale this down, let's say 0 0.1, well, maybe, maybe 0 0.2, no, sorry, maybe 0 0.2, okay. So, and, and then, at the end, we will, we, will scale this back, we will scale this back up. So, what we do, basically, look at this now, right? Okay, much better, right? I think this is much better. Yeah. So so basically this works that we simply this works in a way that we simply scale this down, let's say we scale this down to 0.2, then we create pixelate node. So it uh, I think this is just some sort of filtering and then we scale this back up. So this is like a, uh, we will multiply this back by 5 and then we got 100%. Okay? So we are look, this looks Simply like this. This is the raw image. This is our, our scaled down image. And if I if I if I check this up, okay. Now I choose pixelate, so it so it filters those pixels. Uh, then I will scale this back up because if I didn't have the pixelate, it will it will smooth it out, and we don't want it. Okay, so I turn on the pixelate. Yeah, this is our result. So uh, why, am I why am I showing you this? Because I have this already set, but uh, because in newer Blender the compositor can be visible in viewport. And I think this is better because there is not any smoothing whatsoever. And now if I, I draw, right, this is what I wanted to achieve. Uh, I think it looks now more like a proper pixel art graphic. So this is the second way. There is a downside too. Of course, there is a downside, and the downside is it can look fine in the result. If you are working with this, you may say, "Okay, this is uh, I have control now. I can see each pixel separately, and it looks okay. I can draw it like like this. It's fine." But if you zoom out, look what happens. I'm not sure how to solve this, to be honest, because as you can see, the scale of the pixels stays the same as I zoom out. But it's not really good for you if you are working very precisely with each pixel. It, it's uh, basically, you can't even use it this way. But uh, it depends what you do. You can correct some mistakes. If you zoom this in, it will then keep the resolution it has in its compositor. But if you are zooming this out, it will simply not be the best for <laughs> editing. It also depends whether you are doing pixel art like a very low resolution and, and you need to have control for each pixel or, or you simply draw something and then you will use this as a post process it's up to you just doing this as a post process i think this is incredible this is this is great but if you are working uh, with each pixel it, this might be challenge yeah it, this is not a best solution but uh, i do think it's much better than than this right this looks weird. This might work for some games, of course, some games uh, or, or some graphics, animations, whatever, are deliberately using this uh, B-cubic interpolation or how to call it. In my opinion, this is, this is much better. So let me know, guys, down below in the comments uh, whether or not you find this useful. I hope at least uh, this will help you at least a little. If you have any questions or tips how to even how would you even improve this process, just write down below and let people know. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!